Gundy has hair. Is it halftime? Yeah, he has hair on. Pictures. <laughs> hey, I got a question. For those of you guys who played in the rack when it was packed, is it one of the craziest environments that you've ever played in besides firecrackers on uh, basketball courts? <laughs> That's a great question. Hey, that, that was one of the best feelings playing at the rack because, you know, it's, it, it's not as big as other university um, gyms. So you feel you can feel the crowd. You can feel the floor vibrating, which gave us an advantage. You know, when, once I uh, started feeling the floor vibrate, you know, I could see the demeanor in the um, other team's faces. And, you know, it, it was like, let's go for the kill. You know, it was a great experience playing at Rutgers, man. Like. I hope they never get rid of that gym because, you know, we, especially with the um, coach we got and the players we get, it's, it's definitely going to be an advantage in the big game. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, Iraq, man, to me, I, you know, people all, often ask, you know, what, what were some of the loudest places that, you know, you ever played in? And, and, and Iraq is right up there, you know, one or two. I mean, it was so, you know, the acoustics and, and, and the people on top of you, it was, it was really loud and you could really hear it. Billy Head, um, and it was it was it was exciting to play, especially with the New Jersey uh, matchup and everything else. But um, it, it was loud there, yeah. super I loud. I imagine somebody may disagree with that and say that the Pavilion was the most uh, hyped up <laughs> place to play. Kerry Kittles, you there? <laughs> He's coming soon, Rich. Uh, but you're here, Corinne. I'm here. How are you? I went to the pavilion. I think the rack's a, a more uh, intense place to play, personally. But I've been to the pavilion. It's nice. It's an experience. Yeah, I bet. All right, so it is 6-10, and uh, Creighton's about to tip off. We're going to do something. Um, every time someone hits a three-pointer, Donna, can you let me know when that happens? What do we have to do, a shot? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, so we have a, a wheel of uh, prize giveaway. And for our panelists, you guys, if you land, your name's on there, if you land, we'll donate uh, $250 to a charity of your choice. Jerry, I know which one you're picking. <laughs> Jerry, actually, while we're doing that, why don't you tell us a little bit about Team Walker, my friend? Uh, um, yeah. Well, it's something that um, is, is a social service program that, you know, our number one priority is, is education. You know, a lot of people for a long time thought it was about, you know, sports, given the fact of my background, but that's so far from the truth. We have a, you know, a one wonderful system. We have, we just built, we built our own uh, learning center in Jersey City and Lafayette section. Um, so we're pretty proud of that. Um, we've been there now for almost seven years, um, believe it or not. So we, you know, we do all sorts of things. Uh, my number one priority, like I said, is education. We do a lot in the field of, you know, science and technology. We do a lot of collaboration with our Olivia Science Center. And um, so it's, it's going well. You know, we still do some athletics, but like I said, our focus is, is, is on the areas. We um, <clears throat> also embarking on doing some new things and providing some lo location training for some of the young adults uh, that come through our program because, we understand, you know, everybody's not going to college, but, you know, everybody needs some sort of skills to, to provide and be a productive citizen. So it's going well. Um, we, you know, we, we have over, you know, 500 kids on a, on a yearly basis. Uh, we do all sorts of things from summer day camp to, you know, education and after school programs. We do a lot of different other initiatives as well as GED and we do stuff for the senior population. We do stuff with, you know, just a lot of stuff. So you guys can look us up on um, on a website, which is www.teamwalker.com. I mean, .org, excuse me. And you can see all sorts of stuff that we do. But we, we love doing what we're doing. It's been in my family for a long time, too. So it's like a legacy. Yeah, yeah it's cool. I've, I'm, I've been lucky enough to go see the schools uh, where Jerry has an impact on the kids. He walks in, he's like uh, Santa Claus. Everybody runs up to him. <laughs> and uh, also, when the bell rings and it's time to go out to the streets, these kids have somewhere to stay and uh, get actually another meal. They stay in the school, and if the school stays open, the teachers stay, and they're all paid by uh, Team Walker. It's pretty amazing. So yep, if you get a yep. chance to check it out, check out Team Walker. All right, are we got hoops going on or what? Yeah, man. <laughs> Ohio hit a three. Is that true? Yes, I didn't want to interrupt. So you can right. spin that wheel. <laughs> the suspense. It's intense, right? 
Oh, <laughs> wow, look at that. That's oh, okay. Oh, boy. Awesome. Huge special effects budget. I love it. Because <laughs> Richie Lemuro seven times. <laughs> All right, Donna, you keeping track of that? Peter Lynch. Peter Lynch. I'm keeping track of that. All right. Let me know when another three hits. I'll just rudely interrupt everybody for it. There you go. Very cool. All right, Kristen, are you there? I am. All Hi, right, everybody. great. There we go. The second leading score. No, the first leading score in high school basketball uh, <laughs> in New Jersey, right? Correct. Who did you pass to become the number one scorer in high school basketball <laughs> history in New Jersey? <laughs> I passed my dad. Uh, he had 3,310, and then wow. uh, the Wagner passed him. Yeah, you, so, you heard that right, guys. Without the three-point line, mind you. He didn't have the three-point line, so I don't know if I would have broke that record. But, uh, I yeah. think you still would have had him. Number two on that list now, by the way, is uh, Dewan Wagner, who yeah. was the best high school basketball player I've ever seen. I saw him play at the Rack in a tournament of champions, and I think the whole city of Camden was there. It was amazing. Yeah. But uh, – <laughs> He's like, uh, I mean, a lot shy of you. So I, that says something right there, right? That's it. I shot the ball quite a few times, I will say. <laughs> what happened to your lady yeah. nights today? Yeah. What'd you say? What happened to your lady nights today? Oh, geez. They, yeah, some mistakes at the end. Was it awesome. same, same as the men then? Uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, the one girl fouled the girl shooting a three pointer, and that kind of turned the momentum. You know, they had a chance, it was you know, it was a mistake, it was tough, but uh, what are you gonna do? You know, it's a shame, but you, you know, you Vivian has done a great job, yeah. You take it to next yeah. year, I think. that's what you do, that's it, yep. Yeah. All right, like I, said, teams I think I saw him come in. Well, when he pops in, he'll pop in. Mike Enzi, who was the hardest guy for you to defend all four years? Or five years, I should say. Uh, playing against? Yeah, hardest guy for you to defend. Uh, I think it was Daniel Chefu. On what team? Um, Villanova. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, just <laughs> way bigger. Car hopefully, Kerry Kittles is not on then. Yeah, he was way bigger. And he was, he was just – I was just a freshman at that point. And so – Sorry? Did you start as a freshman? No, I didn't. I started a couple of games, though. But I should tell you something about the rack. Um, I remember when we played in the rack. Um, during our warm-ups, they always had slow music on. Oh, this is great. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. You remember that? <laughs> I will never forget that. Every time the Rockets players went back into the locker room, the music changed. And we could have warm up like keep up anymore we had to warm up to like slow songs <laughs> yeah they played like russian polka music or something like that yeah so he was so he yeah. was so quincy do you remember did you, did, were you at the bottom of that thing something happened over there somebody had a good plan i'll tell you what it messed us up i never even knew that but that's hey that's smart man yeah they do that i don't mind that i remember man. watching miles powell going like what yeah everyone Everyone was like, what is going on? And like, we just we just stopped for like two minutes. Like, can they change the song? And yeah, I, I mean, they, no. got, they did it twice the last two times we've played there. And uh, I'm sad to say both times it worked. It works. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever could give us the advantage, we got to go with it. <laughs> Ed Zucker, who was the hardest guy for you today? A guy by the name of Mullen. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he, he was pretty good. <laughs> you know, he was, uh, he just beat you in every way of the game. His mind was just so far ahead of everybody else's, but he, he was fantastic. Just, a, I couldn't guard that guy. And the funny part about him is I remember we we're playing him at the garden and I was, uh, he was posting me up and I was full fronting him and they threw a lob pass over my head. And he caught it and I smacked the ball up against the backboard and went out like the half court. So we're coming back down and he says to me, that's the worst thing you could have ever done. <laughs> and I said, what are you talking about? He goes, the next time down, I'm going to pop out on the, on the wing, take a hard dribble to the left and bank it in. 
So what happens next time down? It's exactly what he does. Next time down, he says he's going to do the same thing on the opposite side and does it again. And there's a third time down, he goes, the moral of the story is don't ever embarrass me again. So, <laughs> I learned my lesson the hard way. Get the memo? Got the memo, brother. Jerry, what about you? Who was the big dog against you? Banging in the center. Um. Well, I mean, obviously, Alonzo Mourning. It, it was, it was, it was good matchups with Alonzo in terms of uh, when I was playing up front at the center position, you know. But it was also when I played against, you know, Syracuse with Billy Owens. Billy Owens was a, was a hard cover. I mean, Billy was like like six nine, but he he, you know, he had he had great handle with the ball and. He was very crafty, he, and he was like awkward with it. So a lot of times he'd jump off the wrong leg, and uh, so it was, it was like a little bit difficult, you know, playing playing him. But Alonzo Mourning was it, it was tough because he was a, he was real competitive, and we had some good battles me and Alonzo. So that's some of the famous stories, you know, me and Alonzo battles. So, but them, them two guys, I would have to say, for the Big East. I have a picture of you in my office with Christian Leitner. I know you know that picture. Oh yeah, yeah, Christian. <laughs> Yeah, against um, yeah, when we played them in Sweet Sixteen at the Spectrum, yeah, it was a good game. They wound up beating so that's us. That's another place to play. Yeah, that yeah, it was nice out there. It, it was out there too. It was out there too. So, but yeah, it was a good experience. So, but I mean, Wait, see, Larry Johnson your... too. Who's that? Larry Johnson too. Like outside of conference, oh. you know, when we played UNLV, you know, Larry Johnson was, uh, you know. Well, Larry Johnson, he's probably like 26 years old, too, when I was only 19. But <laughs> even though he was, he was strong. And me, uh, too. But yeah. <laughs> this is UNLV, man. What did you do? But yeah. <laughs> but that, was that guy. Yeah, he was good. Uh, I, 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 would say, I would say one of the toughest guys was um Ben Gordon. I, don't, I know you guys yes, heard yes. Ben Gordon from um, UConn. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah God, God and him was... You know, he's very crafty, very strong, very athletic. So he gets up real high on his shot. So even if you can test, you know, he's getting that shot off at any time. I, I learned a lot from him, but he was one of the most difficult guys that had problems with. And also, he was really good defensively. You know, mm. being very um, strong, upper body, he was able to, you know, keep 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 me in front of him. You know, uh, He was a junior. I only got to play against him one year. Um, I was a freshman when I played against him, so... Coming in as a freshman, you know, I was, you know, still a little wet behind the ears. So he, he gave me the, um, the most difficult time, you know. Um, was it a big difference player in the big East. freshman year to, to junior year or senior year? Is it a big difference? You said what? Is it a big difference from your freshman year to your junior year, developing your body and everything yeah, yeah. else? It, it, it definitely is. You know, um, when, when I came in as a freshman, I was, um, you know, I – even as a junior, I wasn't a very big guy. You know, I got a little more wiry strong as I, um, you know, got older. But, yeah, as a freshman, you know, I, I could – I seen the difference. And um, the speed was was a lot quicker. The guys was a lot stronger. And then, you know, as I aged, you know, I became a little more quicker and, you know, put a little bit more strength on. So, you, it, it's definitely a difference from freshman year to junior year. What about the NBA? Yeah, the NBA is another level, man. All, all guys do is train because, you know, it's, it's no school or guys don't have no job. That's your job. So, you know, the 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 strength and the speed and, the you know, the IQ of the game is at another level at that level, you know. Kerry Kittles, you on there? What's going on? What's going on, man? How are you? Got your golf clubs ready or what? I got to dust those things off, man, in the basement for like a year and a half now. Oh, it's time, my friend. Yeah, I got to find some time to get out there once. It's got to be over 70 for me, though, man. I'm from Louisiana. I don't deal with this 60-degree go. <laughs> yeah. Bring some more weather for us, please. Uh, we were talking before, before you came on, the rack. Did you play at the rack or the pavilion? Who? Which I played, was more I played the rack one year. What's that? I played the rack my last year, one year, yep. Which was more of an intense environment to play in, the rack or the pavilion? The rack or the pavilion, rack, the Villanova Pavilion? Yeah. I like the rack. The rack was cool. I mean, the sound in the, sound in the rack was pretty loud. I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's definitely that's louder than the pavilion. It was probably in college the, the second loudest besides the uh, palestra. Palestra is the loudest? Oh, yeah, by far. Yeah, the palestra. Really? 
Yeah, a big five game back then, the Palestra, you couldn't hear yourself thinking there, man. Oh, Crazy. Who was it? We're talking uh, hardest guy to guard in college. Who was it? College, my, oh, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I was in the Big East, so you had Lawrence Moten at Syracuse was a tough cover. Um, you know, Big Five, you had Jerome Allen at UPenn. You had, you had Eddie Jones at Temple. Um, you know, obviously you had Ray Allen and those guys at Connecticut and Allen Iverson, but Lawrence Moten was probably the toughest cover for sure. I would wager that a lot of people would say Kerry Kittles and Quincy Doobie were their hardest. I, I would wager that. Yeah, it was back in the day. College was fun. We what all, about you know, the Nets? we all went. At, we everybody went at everybody back then. It was really competitive. Yeah, yeah. How when about the days when you watch basketball? What do you see? Switch, 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 switch. That wasn't the case when we played. And and Jerry will tell you I had to guard Terry DeHair as a freshman. So he oh. was talking about he was talking about guarding somebody as a freshman. You know, try to guard Terry DeHair, who's averaging twenty two in the Big East back then. <laughs> yeah, that's real. <laughs> that's a tough assignment. Yeah, it, it was. Yeah. All right. What about uh, a memorable experience you guys had in your conference tournaments? Let's start with you, Jerry. What was your favorite Big East tournament? Just switch back. I don't think anyone's experience. Anyway. I mean, now let me know, you know if they hit a three, guys. Are we oh. switching back to the UCLA game? Or are you staying on? I got Creighton on. Okay, it's, I went back. Ten eleven. It's ten eleven. So there's there's not a lot of scoring going. Yeah, on. I think you should go to the UCLA game. It's back on. <laughs> okay. Personally. <laughs> All right, Jerry, tell us about the uh, the Big East tournament. Oh, uh, I mean, <laughs> we had some memorable moments in the Big East tournament. I, I, you know. You won it, right? Yeah, I won it. Yeah, I won it twice. Uh, and, and, and the one particular time that I, that really stick out is when Oliver Taylor, you know, OT time, what we call it. And, you know, he had back-to-back -back nights where, he, you know, he had a shot at the buzz, buzzer for us to win. Um, that was pretty tight. I, I mean, my senior year. You know, we beat Syracuse by the largest margin in, in, in the Big East history. So my senior year, we we really you know blew through the Big East on, on my senior year. But but when I played with Oliver Taylor and, and Anthony Avent, that year was pretty special because you know nobody really predicted us to win the tournament, and we kind of like came out of nowhere. And and Oliver just you know at the end of both games, both nights, uh, hit two 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 buzzer beaters. So that was really special. Mike Enzi, you had that experience of, uh, of being an underdog and winning, right? Yeah. yeah, we did my sophomore year. And I think that's what makes it special for me. Um, just coming into the year with, like, a lot of people doubting, like, the team, just being all sophomores. Um, and we were just able to go there and get, get it done. Um, I feel like that was the biggest part. And it's really memorable for me because that's the only ring I got to keep from, like, my college career. Stuff. It was memorable for me too, and uh, I bought that guy sitting in the red point at the. Uh, there was a three pointer in the wheel. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I'll get Sorry. back to my story in a second. We're gonna spin the wheel, folks. Love it. For those of you who don't know, uh, we have a wheel, and if you your name falls on it, you get a prize. If you're one of the panelists, we'll donate to a charity of your choice. Okay, spinning the wheel. Can you see it? Yeah, I see it. Tan. <coughs> I don't know what that means, so I'm spinning it again. <laughs> no, that's rich. That's a real person. <laughs> that's the next game we wanted to go. Richie's We're getting two winners. I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Right. All right. So anyway, uh, yeah, me and my dad went and sat and watched uh, Stephen Hall beat this team from Pennsylvania called Villanova in the Big East Championship. That's right, Carrie. And uh, all game long, they were talking trash to me. All these people, oh, we're a, we're a season. Another three. Another three? Another three? Yeah. Another three. Spanish, baby. Owner <laughs> wheel. But I was there, Mike. It was wonderful to watch you, Isaiah Whitehead, Carrington, all those guys, man. And, yeah, uh, and Carrie, I know that one left a little bitter taste in your mouth, buddy. Yeah, I was there. I watched that game. I was there. You there? So that was you talking all that trash. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just rooting for my team, that's all. I know, I know. 
That was amazing, though. That was a wild one, man. Jerry, you yeah. were there, man. Yeah, I was there, yeah. Tony Baloney. Baloney. Go on. Go on. All right. What about you, uh, Kerry? What was your favorite conference? Did you guys uh, win the Big East tournament? Um, yeah, we won in my junior year. One, uh, yeah, my junior year we won it. It's pretty, pretty good. Uh, good tournament that year. How do you compare that to other victories? You put it up at the top. Yeah, I mean, anybody, that, anybody that's, that's actually been able to play in the garden will tell you that it is, you know, they call it the Mecca of basketball for a reason. There's nothing like being in that, being in that building, just like, you know, coming up from the, from the garage, parking garage, just up the elevator in, in this old crappy locker rooms. And, uh, and, you know, you walk in the garden and you hear that horn. It's just a very unique sound, the horn, and the fans are crazy. Um, there's nothing like playing in that building, and I played in a lot of buildings. But Madison Square Garden is it is definitely the place you want to lace them up. So you know, to win a championship in that building, that is special. That is special. Yeah, Mike, you agree? Yeah, I agree hundred percent. Patrick Every Ewing can't even get in that place. Sorry, Patrick Ewing can't even get in that place. <laughs> that's crazy. That's that's weird. But that's that's Dolan for you. <laughs> hey, Kerry, what are you doing now? Tell the folks on the uh, on the Zoom what's going on with you now, my friend. Um, you know, I'm doing a little podcast for the Nets this year. Um, and I also do some other stuff, a couple other podcasts for some friends of mine. So that keeps me busy al along with the five kids. Well, that'll do it. Yeah, five yeah. Kids. that's a lot. Yeah. Quincy, what about you, my friend? How's the weather down in Florida? Oh, the weather good, man. It's, 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 it's hot right now. You know, I might have to come down where you guys at, get a little cold, man. How, yeah. How's the weather over there? Is it, um, is it snowing? Is it still snowing out there? It ain't that great. Yeah. Kristen, are you there? I am. All right, I got a question for you. Who's the, okay. best, who's the best women's basketball high school team in history in New Jersey? Mm. Who is it? Um, uh, St. John Vianney. That's right, it is. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, it is. Second yeah, Madison? Or should What'd you say? Second. Um I would probably say Madison of recent. Shabazz was early on, but St. John Vianney has taken the cake. I, I think Rutgers Prep could have done won it all this year. It would have been a good matchup with St. John Vianney. Mary Klinger has done a great job over there. She's a, you know, obviously a Rutgers grad. Yes. What was your, what yeah. was your favorite uh, tournament at, at Rutgers? Um, geez. I, I, I mean, I had a great experience uh, at Rutgers, you know, with uh, Coach Grenz and then Vivian came in. So, I mean, I was fortunate to play for three great, great coaches. I was at UVA my uh, freshman year and we, um, speaking of championships, we won the ACC and, triple overtime to Maryland. So wow. that was really exciting. Yeah. And then we went to the Elite Eight and lost the two, by two points to Katie Smith and Ohio State to get to the Final Four. Um, so that was a real great experience for me as a freshman. And then, um, you know, the transfer rule I set out when I transferred to Rutgers and uh, we got in, we won the Atlantic 10 that year. The, Rutgers was in the Atlantic 10. Uh, so we were then added to the NCAA. So um, and then Coach Stringer came in my junior year, and then uh, you know it's it, just a great experience with three, three you know big time coaches. So pick one. Pick one, Vivian. Okay, I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> hey, what about you? So I was a freshman uh, at Rutgers the first year that had uh, athletics for women. And uh, back in the day, there was a JV team and a varsity team. And uh, so my junior year, we had one coach the first year, another coach the second year. It was actually Dottie McCray, Seton Hall uh, family. Uh, so Dottie was our coach the second year. And then she left coaching to go into the Olympics, but then she wound up at Stanford. Uh, but uh, Teresa was my, uh, my coach my, uh, my, my junior year. And uh, 
uh, I guess it was uh, Jerry was uh, talking about you know connecting with uh, Coach Coach Hurley, staying connected. And I stay connected with Teresa. We get out and play golf a couple times a year, and she still does some really great things with her community. And uh, it was uh, it was a it was a very different experience. I came to Rutgers to go to school and saw a sign try out for the women's basketball team, and. Um, you know, I, I guess my best story, I never played in the rack um, with, uh, with uh, we had some alumni games, but uh, my best story at the barn uh, was um, when Springsteen was playing there in 1976 and you couldn't get a ticket. <laughs> um, I love it, I love it. it was so, but, you know, I was on the basketball team and uh, so me and this other woman, she was a transfer, she was, her name is Kim Colomb, she was six, seven. And we got a six pack of beer, each one of us. And we went into the women's locker room, which was dingier than any locker room <laughs> at the Square Garden. And we hung out in the locker room, drank our beers. The matron came by, we were real quiet. And as soon as she left, we went up and watched the concert. And that's my best story for the barn. <laughs> <laughs> that's a cool story. Of course, of course, you know, the paint chips falling down. You know, the guys, uh, the guys practiced before us. Uh, so I was uh, on the on the uh, team when uh, the guys went undefeated. That was like when you think of it for Rutgers athletics. Football was undefeated that year, yeah, and basketball right. was undefeated right. that year. Wow. And right. you know, it wasn't like New Jersey. The state of New Jersey would be insane if any one of them were undefeated. Never mind both of them. But you know, it was a different. It was a different year back then. What year was it, Kate? Seventy three. Seventy six. Seventy six. Pretty, pretty yeah. bad, bad moose. Pretty good, pretty good for a guy who wasn't alive yet. Oh, bad house. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, what about you? You got a special relationship with any of your coaches? We were talking about that before. How important is coaching? Yeah, coaching is everything. I think every, you know, every athlete will tell you to play team sport or you have a coach that mentors you and try to get the most out of your mind is by by far my high school coach back in New Orleans. He's like the uh, you know, the Bob Hurley of, of Louisiana basketball. You know, coached a lot of great players, went off to college, and and uh, I wasn't the only, actually the only NBA player to play for him. So, um, you know, very strong leader, <laughs> you know, very strict, very disciplined guy. Um, you know, <laughs> you, you, you're never doing enough, and I think that's why we were able to maximize our talents playing for someone like that. Sure. Quincy, do you have a coach that, uh, that you still talk to or you had somebody made an impact on you? Yeah, um, I would say um, Coach Hill. You know, he came along my junior year. Yeah, he 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 was originally with Villanova, then he got on the staff with um, Rutgers my junior year. And, you know, we clicked immediately. You know, we had a really good relationship. Um, he actually um helped me learn the game a lot more, which made the game easier for me. So, you know, me and Coach Hill, we still you know close to this day. He actually um was in Florida. We hung out about a few days ago. So. Yeah, that's my guy right there. Mike, was he was he on Seton Hall staff when you were there? Yeah, I th he was there my freshman year. Um, and that I must be everywhere. Sorry, yeah, yeah, Red Hill has been yeah. everywhere. He's yeah, been he a lot of places, man. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. everyone knows him too. So yeah, he seems to have a great relationship with everybody he's coached. Like Bob Hurley, I mean, to me, Bob Hurley is is the pinnacle, uh, and that's just from me watching Jerry's relationship with him. I went to a, a basketball game and he didn't talk to anybody the whole game. He just watched the game and it was like, it was like a scientist. It was amazing. You know, every play was about to happen. The guy knows basketball better than anybody I've ever been around my entire life. Um, but I assume that there's some life lessons that come along too, have nothing to do with basketball, which are probably more important. Um, so it's pretty cool that, to hear that you guys had that experience. Ed Zucker, anybody you had uh, who, who made an impact on you? Well, my high school coach was uh, the best coach uh, I ever played for, high school, college, or overseas. And he was just an incredible mentor. And uh, Where was high school, Ed? Uh, Manalapan. Um, You're on the top scores list, too, aren't you? Um, I'm actually uh, – I, I was very nice. They, the Shore Conference uh, just came out with their top 100 players of all time. And, and I was – Jerry Carino did that. Our friend Jerry. Yeah. I was number 24. So it was um, – it was a great honor. In fact, I, I, I used to tell my kids that I was a good player and they never believed me. So, <laughs> and then, I, then that came out in the newspaper about a month or so ago that I was the top 24. And my kids thought like I was lying to them. And, uh, 
you know, but uh, Tom Young was a great coach also at, uh, at Rutgers. Um, he was just a, a disciplinarian guy and a lot of success. And um, just want to tell you one quick story. When we played in the Atlantic 10 championship at the rack, I think it was my freshman year against Temple and that play, it was sold out. It was, it was so loud there, but for me as a young player, I had an opportunity to watch uh, Terrence Stansberry, who played at Temple, who played in the NBA for a while. And he went up against John Battle, who was mm. unbelievable too, who played in the NBA for like 10 or 12 years. And um, just to watch those two guys go at it was unbelievable. But I will tell you, my favorite Rutgers player was Quincy Doobie, my boy. Hey! I, I got to tell you something about this guy. He, I never saw anybody shoot like him. He was just so confident. He had the sweetest stroke. And my kids and Quincy, remember you met my kids at my house that one time? Yeah, I came to your house that time. Right. Quincy yeah. came to my house for dinner one time. My kids were like, uh, you know, in awe of him and uh, followed his career at Rutgers and uh, followed him when he was uh, his first year with the, with the Sacramento Kings and then his overseas career. But that guy, find me a guy who shot the ball better than him because he was unbelievable. Nice. Yeah. Nah, not too many people with a better, smoother look than Quincy. That's for sure, man. Has there been any three pointers? We spent the say, where, where are the three point shots. It's, give the ball to Quincy. <laughs> yeah. right, well, if that was the case. <laughs> I'll spin it anyway. Let's go. <laughs> There's been a lot of attempts. Just <laughs> that's about it. I saw two going, Rich. Yeah, really. I'll do two spins. Two spins. I don't know what game you're watching. <laughs> All right, we'll do another one. I don't think he won. On. Richie, that was a good spin. <laughs> we do have some young teams uh, that are going to watch this. Uh, with their traveling squads. You guys got any advice for them? Why don't we go around the room on that? Kerry, what would you give some advice to some young players out there learning the game, man? For travel AAU? Any any young kids playing. whatever, Whoever's doing whatever they're doing, playing sports. What, what advice do you have? I don't know. Those, you know, some are, you know, AAU travel ball is difficult to try to, like, you know, really, really learn the game because you're just playing – you're playing the game so much. While you're not on the practice court, learning and, and being taught much – um, you know, focus on the fundamentals. I think if you watch the better players in college and in the pros, obviously they're, they're all fundamentally sound. And, you know, just shooting threes is not going to cut it. You know, you got to be able to make the right decisions and you got to be able to handle the ball, not turn it over. And, um, you know, if you want to be a good shooter, you got to have good form. And I don't, I don't think young kids spend enough time working on their form the right way. So, I would say try to focus on that as you're playing games and traveling, but it's, it's kind of hard to do because you're always on the court lacing them up. Who taught you your form? Who was the guy? My high school coach. Yeah. High school coach. How yeah. did he do? Did he uh, you know, square up the elbow, just shoot 100 jumpers, let me see it? Yeah, a lot of one hand, a lot of one hand shooting with the ball here, just like, like they teach you back in the day without, without influencing the ball with your off hand so it doesn't get any side spin on it. So we did that so we were blue in the face. What about slashing in the, in the paint? The Kerry Kittle slash. <laughs> that was just that happened a lot of street games for that. That's playground ball. <laughs> that's, right, yes, that's that gets to the rack when you're playing on the, in the playground. You can't shoot jumpers. <laughs> so that's right. <laughs> hey Jerry, you you're uh, part of a great history of big men playing at the hall. You got Grant Belmire, Coach Bill Myers over there taking care of guys like Mike Enzi uh, and teaching guys how to play big. Who was your guy? How, how did you learn how to play good hoops in the paint? Um. Funny, so, well, it, it was my it was my high school guy. I mean, but Coach Selly went out in college. I, Coach Sullivan, um, he did a pretty good job with me um, with the bigs. Uh, we used to do a lot of breakdown work for him, and you know, I know I know a lot of the stuff like fundamentals. That's one of the things that you know it was advantage from coming from St. Andy's, but we were so fundamentally sound that a lot of the stuff that uh, we would do in college, I already you know it was it was a it was second nature to me, and um, in the drills and et cetera. So. I would say Coach Selly on 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 the college level, but I, I also learned that in high school with Coach Hurley, as well as PJ too. So, um, but um, yeah, the, you know, like 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 um, 
Kerry was saying, you know, with, with basketball, you know, it, yeah, funny thing, these kids is like so different than, than what we we was at one point. And it, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting to see. And I deal with kids all the time. And I was going around Lexington, like going to talk to some kids that was getting in some trouble. And I was asking them their goals and stuff. And this one kid said, you know, I, I want to be a basketball player. I was like, oh, cool, cool. So I was like, you know, what, you know, what you doing to do? You know, to be a become a, a great basketball player, he said, well, he said to me, and I swear to you, he said to me, well, I played a game. <laughs> I played a game about three, four hours a day. So he was referring to the playing like a video game, and that's how he was working on his basketball game. So that kind of like set like a little shock wave to me. I was like, you serious? <laughs> so I was like, you actually got to go to the court and, you know, practice your jump shot. So, yeah, so the kids is a little bit different, and, I, and, I, and I'm looking – I'm, you know, I'm. I, I want them to get back out and playing again because it's, it's like it, the course is empty. It's not like the same anymore, too. So, definitely, definitely. Quincy, how about you? Yeah. Um. Um. Repeat the question again. At, what What about you for young guys to be the next Quincy Doobie and shoot that three? Unlike Kerry Kiss says, don't don't focus on the three. What advice would you give them? Yeah. I mean, I mean, I would tell them to just prepare. You know. Um. Try to learn as much as you can. And when you do, you, you, you have a date for these tournaments. You got to make sure you're preparing on your fundamentals, you're working on your shot. Just, you know, because once you get that platform, you know, that's, that's your time to showcase, you know. So I would tell them just um, try to put two hours, you know, an hour and a half every day into your craft, you know, especially when it's close to um, going to compete against other people, other players. Yeah. It's interesting you say that. Who, who is the most competitive guy? you ever played against I'm just thinking of competition wise you know is there that guy who stands out who was just at a whole nother level than everybody else the Kobe Bryant if you will uh you talking about like a high school or anywhere anywhere I mean I I was I played in the league you know three years so I would say um you know just being on the court against Kobe LeBron you could you could just feel that hunger you could that that killer instinct you know they yeah. were they were just different different type of different type of human beings man it, are you, know, you able to, to feel that kind of is there's just you know it when you see it type of thing? Yeah, you 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 know when you see it out of players, you know? You 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 could tell who has the killer instincts, who 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 got the killer in them, you know, and those are the type of players, you know, I, I respect and you know I, I, I got a lot of my game, you know, because I, I started playing ball late. I got a lot of my game just watching a lot of NBA games and, and, and college games, you know. I like the I love watching Allen Iverson. Um, Kerry Kittles was one of my um, favorite players watching growing up, you know. Um, so, you know, I try to take pieces out of everybody's game and, you know, model it to mine. Sure, sure. Yeah. Mike, what about you, Mike Enzi? I mean, for me, um, I didn't start playing basketball early. Um, I actually started playing basketball when I was 15 years old, um, and it wasn't, like, organized basketball. It was just, like – well, we knew how to play back home in Nigeria. So my big advice for every kid is um, for a lot of the kids that are not going to make it, there, there's going to be a bunch. Um, and we have to learn to be honest with ourselves and our skill set. Um, I feel like basketball comes with a lot of blessings and a lot of advantage. Just being on the court, learning a lot of stuff, just from like being on the team, teamwork, the dedication, determination, and all that stuff that comes with being a student athlete it could help you in just different areas in your life. So if you learn how to like take advantage of these, um, there's a whole bunch of network that comes with basketball as well. So why every other person is in college just focusing on basketball, you could be that guy that also wants to focus on the education part because it pays as well. Um, like I remember like just going out to different networking event and like, oh, hey, I know you, you play basketball. And he just made the conversation easier for me. So I just feel like a lot of these young guys should learn to tap into that area as well, because um, it would definitely pay as well. So, you know. Sure. I mean, the doors that get open through sports, uh, they're really unlimited. I've seen you when you were when you came down in the summertime, you're on the phone with all types of people in the backyard the whole time. People I knew, you know, just working your network. And I know I've seen you at the at the Rock doing the same thing. So, uh yeah. It opens it, it, doors, there's no doubt about it. And I, I know all you guys, everybody on here is taking uh, real advantage of that for sure. Um, yeah. So actually, that it makes me think, how do you feel about this um, this effort? You know, Geo Baker was kind of hitting 
hitting the social media saying maybe it's time for these players to start getting a different kind of benefit from playing. Uh, do you think it's okay the way it is now or do things have to change? Um, I was actually asked this question. Um, you know, not a lot of players are going to get like, let, let's say like the, in college, there's like different types of players. There's like the superstars and there's just like the team players, but also you got to realize that not everybody who goes through the program, gets the benefit some guys are going to come through that program they're going to go to the nba some guys are going to come they're going to give 100 percent to basketball and not i wouldn't blame anybody for it i wouldn't blame the school um because at some point everybody got to be held accountable but i've seen a lot of guys come through college and they can't even remember their major their majors or like don't even want to pay attention to the school yeah. so at the end of the day if your four years is over and you didn't make an impact on the court, you don't get a career out of it. It's just like you wasted four years of your life. All you have left will be memories. So for some of the guys who have the chance to profit off like their image and everything, I feel like you should let everybody take advantage of what they, they can at the time they're in college. Because I just feel like this, the school makes money off these guys. Some of them might just end up going to school for four years and getting nothing out of it. So if they could do it in college, why not? You should let them get it. So that, that's how I feel. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's how I feel 100%. And a lot of people might not agree, but for me, I would, I would think some people should get like a chance. You know? I do agree with you. I think you know, Quincy and Kerry, you guys are probably very good examples, um, and Jerry, of, of people who are – they have – you know, your universities have, have used your likeness often, uh, probably, you know, with your support, of course. But I wonder, you know, it, was there a time where you could have used a couple of dollars in your pocket if things were different? Kerry, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I, I think so. And I, and I think we're seeing that, that shift and that movement towards that now with college athletics where the NCAA is going to be, you know, almost required to do it. Um, you know, I, I don't see why if, if your off day is a Sunday, Sunday is your off day and, and you have an hour to go sign autographs in the bookstore at Dick's Sporting Goods, your jerseys or the team basketball, I don't see why why is you're not permitted to do that. So um, oftentimes, you know, you, you don't, your family lives far away and, you know, you, it'd be nice to have your parents be able to fly to come watch a game. I know for me, my, my folks are all the way in New Orleans or if I wanted to go home, you know, in the springtime when the season was over, you know, a quick little fight home to New Orleans for a long weekend would have been nice, but you can't really do that. And so I think they're going to um, change those rules eventually. Yeah, I think the rules do have to change. I, I remember remember when Kemba Walker went on that tear and won the Big East tournament and then won the NCAA tournament. And then after all that, before he entered the NBA, he said he went to sleep at nighttime hungry because he really didn't have much money for food. That That just, you know, come on. So... I do think it's, you know, things are going to change probably for the better. Uh, while I have Kristen and Kate, how do you guys feel about the equality fight now to get in the women's uh, sports better representation in the weight room and all those things? Um, I think it was really eye-opening to see. Um, yeah, I well, think, I mean, the pictures literally were pretty eye-opening. Oh, geez. They were from the food to uh, the training room to um, the swag bag that the men's and you know the difference you know I know and people talk about the money situation and stuff obviously the power five conferences are going to have you know a ton more money but I you know it's the NCAA and it's both men's and women's and I think you know with us more time on social media now because of COVID I think it, it was made you know people were able to see really what was going on um, I think a regular time with March Madness you know I, I don't know if I don't know if so much would have been paid attention to that because of the fanfare and all that going on, at, you know, during non-COVID. Um, but, yeah, it was really eye-opening, and I'm glad the NCAA did step up and do something about it. Yeah, I think uh, this, this time period during COVID has uh, shown that the power is in uh, the players, the people, whatever movement they want to advance. If you put the right platform out there, you can achieve it. Uh, it's kind of a good message for all of us. But – we have uh, a couple more minutes left. Quincy, is there anything you want to say to the crowd before you leave, my friend? Uh, just, you know, good hanging out with all you guys. You know, wish everybody continued success and, you know, be safe out there.
Thanks, Quincy. We'll be uh, we'll be talking again soon. Hopefully, you can come up to New Jersey and visit us. Yeah, Mike, absolutely. You want to say to everybody? Who said it? Mike Enzi. Oh, sorry. I didn't get the question. Anything you want to say to everybody before you sign off? A charity? Anything you got going on? Just a well wish? Anything? Quincy, if you have a charity of choice, let me know. Oh, well, um, I just want to thank um, you, actually, for having this set me on. Um, I just want to wish everybody well. Um, I know we're still living in tough times. Um, just want everybody to stay healthy um, and for God's blessings to be upon us and our families, you know. Thanks, yeah. Mike. And for me, just still focus on what for right now. Anything to come would just be like in the future, you know. Well, hopefully you can come and play some pool basketball with me soon, so. Um, I, need to, I need to get in shape. <laughs> Jerry, you got a send-off message, my friend? Oh, man, yeah. first, thanks for having me. Jerry or Kerry? Jerry, yeah, Kerry, you next. Yeah, Kerry. Yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, deference. Deference to the younger Kerry. No, and just thanks for having me. I, I appreciate it. This is great. I, I love reminiscing about my career and, and hearing hearing other stories. You know, you're always learning about life and about, you know, sports and how it's impacted all of us. And so, you know, thanks to everybody for having me and hope everyone stays safe. I'll see you on the golf course, Kerry. Yes, I'll be out there. <laughs> Jerry? Yeah, same. I, I just want to, you know, thank my, my, my Big East brothers for, being on this farm tonight, I, it's good to see all you guys and happy that everybody doing well and uh, continue to try to make this world a better place. And I, I appreciate Rich uh, putting this on. It, it was cool to do something like this and we need to do more more stuff like this as, as a busy Big East family. So I appreciate it. And, and you know, God bless and stay safe out there. Everybody check out Team Walker, teamwalker.org. Yeah. They do great stuff. Eddie Zucker. Yeah, I want to thank you also for uh, you and your dad and uh, your firm for having us uh, on. It's, a, it's great to talk basketball and to see so many other people uh, in the basketball world so successful and hear their stories. Uh, I have a very, very strong appreciation for life. Uh, a year ago today, uh, I was one of the first people that got corona and I spent three weeks in the hospital and the doctors didn't know if I was going to live or not. So um, I've been through some wars in my life. And uh, been able to persevere through a lot. And I think athletics taught me so much. And uh, I have a very, very strong appreciation for life. I have a beautiful family, four beautiful, healthy kids. So every day I wake up and my feet hit the ground. It's a great day. I so hear that. Very appreciative. Kristen, St. John Vianney is the great. Let me hear it again. St. John Vianney is the great. <laughs> Just want to make sure. What's that? Oh, we were the greatest team ever. <laughs> I mean, the greatest greatest sport. You're the greatest scorer <laughs> ever, men's or women's, period. That's right. Now, um, I just want to thank Rich and Kate for inviting me. I think this was great hearing the different stories. Um, and, I, you know, it's just I enjoyed my time and, um, you know, looking forward to the next one. I'll set another one up. Kate, anything? I'm going to spin the wheel again, everybody. So hang on. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. I look forward to next year's being back at the Langosta Lounge on Oceanfront in Asbury. <laughs> yeah, let's, so go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah, Whoever, everybody who doesn't know, we usually do this at, at a local establishment. It's a lot of fun. Next year, we'll be back in person and uh, yeah. and we'll do it again for sure. It's just great to have you all with us and, and to, you know, put some smiles on people's faces. It's not the easiest time to watch the NCAA. Uh, it's a lot more fun when we can see each other, so. Here's a couple more wheel spins. Thanks everybody for hanging out. Uh, and let's go, I guess, well, you know, let's, let's end on this. Who's your horse? For me, it's Gonzaga. Carrie? Mm, yeah, they'll probably win it this year. Yeah. They'll probably win it. Gary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quincy? Yeah, I'm, I have to go Gonzaga, man. They're they yeah. really deep. I think yeah. they are. Suggs is the real deal, man. Yeah. Mike? Jeffrey Gonzaga. Gonzaga. I'm going to unmute you, hopefully. See if you can unmute yourself, Mike. There we go. Oh, oh sorry. Can you hear me? Oh. Yeah, I think Gonzaga got it. Yeah. Kate? I'm staying with the Big Ten and going with Michigan. Hey. I saw, I saw, I saw. Kristen? I'm just going to say Villanova. 
All right, fair enough. All right, bye everybody. Thank you for joining. We're gonna do two more spins. Have a great night. Thanks. Bye guys. Okay. Right, right, right. Come on. <laughs> Amy. Come on, Team Walker. Come on. <laughs> who, who don't need to know your charities anyway, so don't worry. <laughs> I can't see. Amy can't win twice. We're doing it again. <laughs> Start this program. Oh, Ron's the winner. There was a three point. There was? All right, another yep, one. One more. Don Lemiro's like, what are you doing, Rich? <laughs> <laughs> And Our leader rates are going up. Kind of like leadership quality. Yeah, I like to listen. I, I... Yeah. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Yeah, Have a good night. Nice. Enjoy the thank tournament. You. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you. Sign for me. <laughs> He's thank you. That's what you need.